The following is an original production of HCC TV, Howard Community College Television. Welcome to In the Spotlight, Howard Community College's show about the Horowitz Visual and Performing Arts Center. In this episode, we'll talk with Kyle Coughlin about this year's HCC Jazz Festival, presented by the college's jazz faculty. Grace Anastasiadis catches up with director Brandon McCoy to talk about HCC's student production of Anton in Show Business. We'll introduce Fahima Vadat, who recently took on a new role as director of HCC's visual arts program. Angela Phillips sits down with director Darius McKeever to find out more about the Arts Collective's production of Prelude to a Kiss. And Arts and Humanities Division Chair Valerie Lash highlights an evening of student arts, an event that showcases student work at the college. HCC's Jazz Festival, created and organized by Kyle Coughlin, coordinator of HCC's jazz program, was a great success. The HCC Jazz Festival started this school year in February and, uh, and I started it. It was uh, an idea that I had to involve students in the county, uh, in the public schools, to get them to HCC to see how nice our facilities are and to get them to have an opportunity to perform in those facilities too. The festival combined a series of master classes with a faculty concert. The Jazz Festival had a series of afternoon master classes, uh, which were free. Uh, it began with the Wild Lake High School uh, Jazz Ensemble performing. And in that situation, I made comments and suggestions on how they could improve as an ensemble. Uh, and after that, the, uh, I gave a, a master class on jazz improvisation. And, and then after that, the Folly Quarter Middle School uh, rhythm sections uh, actually performed a few pieces. And our faculty, Jeff Reed, uh, worked with those students in the rhythm section. Uh, and in the evening, we had a faculty performance with the faculty jazz quintet. Master class topics were chosen based on the needs of the students participating. The master classes mainly focused on things that were essential for are things that are essential for, for young students, middle school, high school students to be aware of and to focus on. Uh, the, the big band master class is a traditional sort of setting where the band plays and then an adjudicator or a teacher will make comments and suggestions on how they can improve. The other clinic that I did was a, a I call a basic introduction to jazz improvisation. These are the fundamental skills that students need to actually improvise. And if you're going to play jazz, then improvisation is a big part of that. So, uh, so that's always a, a good place to start. Uh, Jeff Reed's master class was specifically on uh, working with rhythm sections and uh, Jeff is our jazz bass faculty at HCC and an outstanding musician and teacher. Um, he is uh, probably the most in-demand bass player in Baltimore. He focused on what the rhythm section needs to do and, and uh, especially for middle school students often they haven't really listened to jazz much at all. So this was a good introduction to some of the things that they really should focus on. HCC jazz concerts have been well received and attendance continues to grow. The HCC Faculty Jazz Quintet performed as part of the festival, providing visiting students a chance to hear great music while offering insight into jazz performance. I try to practice what I preach. Uh, it's always good to, to stand by and so when I tell the students to really think rhythmically in their improvisation, I try to take that as the same approach in, in my own improvisation. Um, for the students to hear what professional musicians are doing and musicians who have been playing jazz for a long time, uh, it's good for them to get that input and to, to get to listen to uh, the same music but played at a different level. Coughlin feels HCC's music outreach program is vital to the growth and development of student musicians in Howard County Schools. It gives them an opportunity to work with our faculty to and to work with musicians who, who specialize in certain fields 
whereas the the band directors or teachers they may be working with don't necessarily have the same specific knowledge or experience that we do so what we can offer is you know our bass teacher or our drum instructor or one of our faculty members who specifically works with with one area that they can come in and, and give the students more insight to what they're doing and offer some suggestions which might help them develop to be better jazz musicians and and part of it is just letting them know what we have to offer because they don't really know until we go and and find them or present it to them and and uh, the result is that they see wow that they have some really good faculty here and this is you know this is this is exciting so maybe HCC is worth looking into. Jazz enthusiasts can look forward to several events planned for the future. We are having the U.S. Navy Commodores uh, perform at HCC in Smith Theater and this will be the third year, uh, third consecutive year that they've performed here and this is a, a great opportunity for our students and then students in the community, uh, in the public schools to come in here. Really one of the best big bands anywhere. Then we also have several jazz faculty concerts and several of the jazz faculty, they'll do their own uh, jazz recitals. And then also there are student concerts as well. And it's a great opportunity for the students to perform and get experience. And uh, for that we use Monte, Monte Ibarra Recital Hall, which acoustically is, is really, really great for those performances. To find out more about HCC's jazz program and upcoming events, contact Kyle Coughlin at kcoughlin at howardcc.edu. A group of HCC theater students had a chance to show off their acting chops in a production this past winter. Grace Anastasiadis has the story. A witty production of Anton and Show Business filled the seats of the Studio Theater in the Horowitz Center. Lisa Wilde, director of theater, chose Brandon McCoy to direct the play for HCC's theater program. Anton and Show Business is a comedy by Jane Martin. Uh, it premiered at, in the Humana Festival at Actors Theater of Louisville, which is a breeding ground for cutting edge new contemporary plays. So it's about a lot of things. I mean, to, to sort of sum it up to what the play is about is difficult, but at its core, uh, it follows the story of three actresses auditioning for a production of Chekhov's Three Sisters to be performed at a small regional theater company in San Antonio, Texas. And the story sort of follows their exploits in, um, in all the way from getting cast to rehearsing to almost getting to be able to perform it. Last year, we did Spring's Awakening by uh, Frank Vedekind, and it was a great show, big cast, full production values, uh, a lot of male roles, and we realized when we were doing auditions that we had so many great women in the program, and that we didn't really have the number of roles in that show to, to work with all of them. So this year, I really wanted to work on a smaller show with more female roles and to really emphasize the, the script and the acting. As an adjunct faculty member in HCC's theater department, McCoy has already worked with many of the students. He does a lot of teaching of acting, especially the, the majors, acting one and acting two, and so he really knows the pool and he knows what they need to work on and he can easily translate what he's doing in classroom onto what's happening on stage, which is what our hope is with these shows, these productions, is to give them the chance to put into practice during a performance the work that they've been doing in the classroom. McCoy says his directing style has been influenced by the great directors he's worked with in the past. I try to take as much of a hands-off approach as possible. I mean, the directors that I like to work with as an actor are the ones who seem like they're fans. You know, they, they're fans of the process and they want the actors to explore and find the moments on their own. And so it's just a, it's a molding process. You find your way into making the moments work as a unified vision. And so I, I like the room to be an enjoyable one, and especially with a play like this, it's particularly helpful. And the more fun that they're having in creating it, the more fun it's gonna be for the audience to watch it. And fun is exactly what McCoy is striving for in this production. Well, I hope the audience has fun. I think something that we lose sight of sometimes, um, and, and it, rightly so, the process becomes about the art so much that sometimes we forget about the audience. So in its simplest form, I hope the audience comes and has a really good time. It's not to say that there's not something they can't get out of this. There's all kinds of 
lessons to be honed and relation, human behavior and relationships. I mean, everything that a good story should have. But at its core, it's a celebration of theater, a celebration of actors, and more specifically, a celebration of, of female actors. So in a way, we're mirroring the three sisters in Anton and show business. And then we, by doing this show, are celebrating the female population of our acting students. Giving the students real world experience is important. What we tried to do was to emulate a professional theater process uh, as much as possible. Partly because the play talks about it so much, but also it's not something that we regularly get the time to teach in our classes. We are training actors in the hopes that they will go out and, and make a living out of this. Um, so what we've tried to do, which is really difficult to do in an academic setting, is to show them what a professional process is like, show them what is expected of professional actors, um, and the relationships between them, the protocols. We've run an equity schedule so that they understand what it's like to be in a union show. And the process has been very, it's not to say that it's been stuffy, but it's been very professional. And I think what has happened for our students is that it's put a lot of the onus on them. And they really feel what it would be like if they're doing this, they're getting paid to do this. And there's that responsibility towards a professional theater company and doing this show and doing it well. And it's not to say we don't get that in our academic endeavors, we do. But I think the process has been slightly different in that um, it's, it's sort of a glimpse into what they have to look forward to. I think that's really fun. For more information on the theater program, contact Lisa Wild at lwild at howardcc.edu. I'm Grace Anastasiadis for In the Spotlight. Fahima Vadat is HCC's new Director of Visual Arts. We sat down for an intimate look at her life as an artist, teacher, and administrator. She remembers her first artistic moment as a young girl in Iran. When I was just a um, third grader, my mother gave me my uh, first sketchbook. And uh, what happened, I was so fascinated with this bare open book that uh, I only had a pencil and this sketchbook and I started drawing and I drew portraits of whatever that I was thinking. I was just making portraits of my mom, my, my dad, my sisters, my brothers and so forth. At the age of 15, Vadat spent a year in India. It was during her time there that she began to draw inspiration from social issues and injustice, cementing her future as an artist. I was uh, so moved by the whole notion of how poverty uh, was all around me and how much I was affected by seeing people suffering and, and little girls and women uh, working so hard and just uh, noticing that they live on the streets, for example, and, and uh, they work so hard, but that's, that's their life, that's, that's what they have. And I was just suffering myself. I, they, they, I was feeling their pain. And that was a very crucial moment for me to, um, to try to find a way to, to uh, speak up about these sufferings. Following the Iranian Revolution of 1979, Vadat obtained a religious asylum visa and came to the U.S. to pursue a college education in the arts. During her undergraduate and graduate years, she continued to create multimedia pieces focused on social issues. Her most prized works are rooted in her personal history. One of the highlights of my career is the, when I received an NEA grant to do the body of work that I I uh, was researching for several uh, years, more than f probably five or six years, I was focused on this um, work that I wanted to create a memorial f uh, and give a memorial service to the Baha'is who were, who were uh, martyred and who were uh, killed in Iran after 1979, and uh, which I had two of my uh, relatives, my great uncle, who was 80 years old, the um, retired uh, army general, and my cousin, who was 32 years old, nurse, who served the southern part of Shiraz, which they were both executed. And I wanted to 
bring dignity and and uh, a, memor a memorial service to these people who, for most part, did not have any any service or their uh, bodies were weren't found or ditched in large uh, graves. Vadat currently shows her works nationally and internationally. Her most recent collection focused on women's issues through protest art. A spirit of hope, beauty, and freedom permeates the work. My recent work was uh, shown at Red Line Milwaukee. It was a solo uh, installation, mixed media installation, that dealt with um, protest. It was called uh, Protest from Freedom Series, which I have been working on this body of work for years. And um, I have any Iranian artist who lives outside U.S., their work, whether they want it or not, um, becomes political. My work is still socially based, but, uh, but, it's, but it has political component to it, and an audience can read into that if they want to. Educational settings seem natural to Vedat. They provide an environment for open dialogue about the subject matter while passing on her skills and philosophy. Her career as an educator began at her alma mater of Southern Methodist University. We went to Taos, New Mexico for a semester uh, of, um, of studying, and that's when my students, I was a TA, I was a graduate student, and um, the students that I was working with, they told me I'm a great teacher, I should continue teaching. And that, that was the moment that I realized that I belong to this place, to education, but also as an artist, but also as, uh, as an American, to be, to be able to call myself an Iranian-American. Uh, living here in this country. Having found her calling as an artist and educator, Vadat began to seek a permanent position in a collegiate setting. She had already spent time in California, Texas, and Wisconsin, so she hoped to find an opportunity on the East Coast. HCC proved to be a perfect fit. When I came actually to um, Howard Community College for interview, I was immediately taken by the setup Horwitz Center, just so inviting. I just love this open space, walking in. As the new director of visual arts, Vadat takes a practical approach to meeting students' academic needs. Since this is a two-year college, uh, my focus is to make sure our students learn traditional skills, but also are aware of contemporary modes and uh, aesthetics that is happening in the art world and in education so that they are ready to take the next step, which is for them to transfer. Majority of our students these days are transferring to four-year college. In class, she seeks to teach her students more than basic drawing and portraiture skills. She encourages students to find their own inspiration, perspective, and voice. Our role is to make sure our students uh, have those abilities and build those abilities to be able to move on with their careers as global citizens ra rather than just being so, um, so isolated in small community. So for those reasons, I, I like to lead um, and, and serve um, my community of students, faculty, administration, but also community th through uh, strong uh, academic curriculum. For more information on HCC's Visual Arts Department, contact Fahima Vadat at fvadat at howardcc.edu. To see more of her work, visit fahimavadat.org. HCC's Arts Collective Spring Production is a heartfelt comedy directed by Darius McKeever. Angela Phillips has more. Prelude to a Kiss, Craig Lucas's brilliantly written, funny, romantic, and haunting fairy tale is McKeever's first solo directing role with the Arts Collective. I started directing actually in high school and uh, we had a Shakespeare class and our teacher, I was horrible 
horrible at memorizing lines. And so he was like, well, what do you think about directing and assistant directing the scenes with me? I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'll try that. And I did and ended up loving it. McKeever came to HCC in 2006 and took part in his first arts collective production, Our Town. With mentorship from AC producing artistic director, Sue Kramer, he has since taken on various projects with the Arts Collective team as an actor, designer, and assistant director. He's thrilled to be directing Prelude. It's definitely a romantic comedy. Uh, it has a sort of fairy tale aspect to it as well. And I don't want to give too much away. <laughs> but, you know, it definitely focuses on relationships. It mainly, mainly focuses on, you know, the relationship between two young people in New York and who meet each other and instantly there's that connection and they fall in love and you get to go with them on that journey. In casting the play, McKeever followed the Arts Collective's practice of open auditions for students and community members. Among the cast members are Bill Stanley, an HCC theater veteran playing the role of the old man, and Carrie Eastridge, a current HCC theater major, playing the role of Rita Boyle. Like I started at Howard Community College pre-equity, back when uh, I guess The Skin of Our Teeth was the first show I did here as a sort of community production. I didn't do any theater in high school. I was like all into soccer and everything. And, um, it wasn't until I came here, actually, that I auditioned for um, on Broadway. McKeever sees great benefits in casting actors with various levels of experience. It's definitely a challenge to sort of figure out, okay, you know, I have someone in the cast who's been doing this forever, and I have someone who's doing it for the first time, and someone who's really just starting to get into it. And it's, yeah, <laughs> I had to ask myself that question, how am I going to do this? But it starts with the, the foundation of that is just making sure that everyone just talks and gets to know each other and shares those experiences. The actors aren't the only ones learning during this process. McKeever, still developing as a young director, knew he had a big job ahead of him and took great care in preparing for the task. Well, I think it's really important to know the material. So I spend a lot of time with the script, just making notes about, you know, what I'm seeing visually, you know, what I'm you know, getting from the characters and what their stories might be. And, but not too much because I definitely like to see what the actors bring to, for that portion. This approach works well for his actors. He gives you like enough freedom to figure out what you think your character would do, especially like even now in the process, um, he lets us kind of try new things because you know your character changes over over time. Um, but yeah, if it's if it's needed, he'll obviously jump in and be like, okay, no, I want you here, or try this and see how that feels. So um, it's definitely a perfect balance of freedom and structure. What I like is that he directs similarly to the way I direct. I direct on stage if, I, you know, if it's appropriate, you know, if things aren't going the way that I show. Through a uniquely collaborative process, McKeever, Stanley, and Eastridge bring these characters to life on stage, marking yet another successful Arts Collective production. For more information on the Arts Collective, visit howardcc.edu slash artscollective. For In the Spotlight, I'm Angela Phillips. At the end of each semester, the Arts and Humanities Division holds an event called An Evening of Student Arts, where student work is celebrated in the realms of radio, TV, and the visual and digital arts. Division Chair Valerie Lash describes how the event has grown over the years. We actually used to have what we called Fine Arts Night, and everything uh, we'd have uh, theatrical scenes and music and dance and, and the art gallery opening. But um, now we have student arts all year. I mean, things are happening all the time. But we've retained this one evening uh, that we do twice a year, one in December and then one in May, where um, the student visual arts are e exhibited. Two pieces are selected by the faculty of each art class and showcased in the student art exhibit. 
all of the art classes are represented. So that would be uh, everything from two-dimensional design, painting, drawing, digital arts, photography, um, graphic design. Uh, we actually will have um, architecture um, uh, shown as well as interior design. So every art class that we are, uh, that we uh, offer on campus has uh, two pieces of work that, that come out of it. The reception held as part of the event is a great opportunity for the audience to peruse the exhibit before awards are given to the top favorites. Yes, for the Evening of Student Arts, we have um, generally three awards, uh, sometimes four. And the three awards are the President's Favorite Piece of Art, the Vice President of Academics um, um, Affairs' Favorite uh, Piece of Art, and my award, which is the um, Arts and Humanities Division Chair's Favorite Work of Art. And occasionally, the Director of Visual Arts gives a special award as well. The Evening of Student Arts also includes a TV and radio lounge held in Montebaro Recital Hall. The lounge highlights student work chosen by the faculty of the TV and radio production courses. In addition to this wonderful evening, there are many other events that take place at the end of the semester to celebrate the arts. We have um, the Arts Collective program, and so those are uh, plays, um, improv, cabarets that include students, uh, community members, faculty, staff, uh, guest artists. We have student um, recitals, we have student jazz ensembles, uh, cello ensembles, uh, just all kinds of student work. We also have dance performances, so the arts are alive and well, particularly at this time of year at the end of the semester when um, students get to strut their stuff. Lash believes this is a very important experience for students in the arts. When you're creating something, you're creating it for yourself, of course, but you're creating it for an audience, whether it be a dance or a piece of music that you're playing or writing uh, or a piece of art that you have created. It's important that an audience see it, hear it feel it, uh, because that is part of the whole experience. And a student having um, a true artistic experience, is which, which is what we want them to have, uh, needs to have that audience. And it's risky, you know, um, because it could be you put something out there and nobody likes it, you know. So taking that risk, creating a piece of art, having an audience receive it, um, and uh, you as an artist can get that feedback as you're watching the audience, whether it be at your exhibit or at your dance concert, you know, you can feel that. That is all part of the total artistic experience, creating art. An evening of student arts is great fun for everyone. Oftentimes, of course, the students come and their parents often, or their children. Um, I remember years ago, my mom was taking a ceramics uh, class and her work was chosen. Oh, well, my daughter and I came and brought her flowers, and so there's a lot of that that goes on, too. It's very much an honor even to be selected to be included in the exhibit, um, and we try to make it a party. To find out more information about classes offered through the Arts and Humanities Division, go to howardcc.edu, click on Academics, and then select Academic Divisions. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to learn more about the Horowitz Visual and Performing Arts Center, you can go to howardcc.edu slash Horowitz Center. I'm Janelle Broderick for In the Spotlight. See you next time.